Hello and welcome back to Multivariable Calculus. In today's part 5 we will talk about the important total derivative for functions in several variables. However, before we start, I first want to thank all the nice people who support this channel on Steady via PayPal or by other means. And please don't forget, links to the PDF versions and the quizzes you find in the description. Now, in the last video, we have already discussed one kind of derivatives, namely the partial derivatives. Indeed, they were easy to handle for calculations, but they don't give the complete picture about what a derivative should do. Therefore, let's recall how a linear approximation with the derivative works in one dimension. This means now we consider a function f from r into r. Moreover, you should know this linear approximation with secants and a tangent we have discussed in Real Analysis part 34 and 35. However, let's quickly recall what it means that such a function is differentiable at a given point x tilde. Roughly speaking, it means that we can approximate the function around this point x tilde linearly. This means we look at x tilde and shift it a little bit by a number h. And now this should be f at the point x tilde plus a linear function we could write as b times h. This means here if we look at the graph of f and fix the point x tilde, then we have a tangent here. In other words, here you find the corresponding function for this tangent with the new variable h. And then you should immediately see we don't have the equality here because we just have an approximation. And in order to explain how good this approximation is, we introduce a rest term r of h. And to make it a little bit simpler, we also write r of h times h. And now if the approximation is so good that the rest term goes to zero when h goes to zero, then we speak of differentiability. Moreover, then you also know the slope b here is what we call the derivative of f at the point x tilde. And usually we denote this by f prime at x tilde. Okay, then the whole definition reads that the function f is differentiable at the point x tilde if such a number b exists and such a function r exists. So then this is the definition and it tells us we find such a best linear approximation around x tilde. And exactly this is now what we want to generalize to higher dimensions. Now this means instead of b times h we take a linear map in Rn. So you see, the idea is completely the same, we just have to use the correct notions in higher dimensions. In other words, we will have a linear map L from Rn into Rm. And of course, such a linear map could be represented by a matrix. More precisely, here instead of the one dimensional map that sends h to b times h, we now have a map that sends h to L of h. Hence, you should see what in one dimension is the derivative is now a linear map. Okay, then I would say let's put all of this into a formal definition. So we consider the general case of a function from Rn into Rm. This means that we have exactly n variables and the values of the function are given by vectors with m components. Now, the term we want to define is differentiable as we have it in one dimension, but to make it clear, we often talk of totally differentiable. And as you know, this is a property that is defined pointwisely. So the function is called totally differentiable at a given point of the input space. And now we already know what we need for this definition, namely this equation here in the generalized form. So we write f of x tilde plus h is equal to f of x tilde plus a linear map L, L of h, plus a rest term which should be small for small h. And in order to keep it simple, let's put everything for the rest term into one function phi of h. Now, in the one dimensional case, this means the function phi is so good that it goes to zero even when we divide it by the number h. However, here we now can't divide by h 
because h is a vector now. However, we can divide by the length of the vector. Therefore, what we find here in the denominator is the Euclidean norm of the vector h. Of course, we already know this because we have talked about the Euclidean distance. And indeed, the Euclidean norm is simply the Euclidean distance of h to the zero vector. In other words, the square root of the component squared and added. So you see, this is not so complicated, but definitely something we have to do to say that this error term here goes faster to zero than h. Hence, we would roughly write if h goes to the zero vector, this whole term here goes also to the zero vector. However, here please note, this is the zero vector in the output space, so in Rm, and this here is the zero vector in the input space, so Rn. Moreover, please note, that this whole expression here means that you can take any sequence of vectors h that converges to zero and the result is that this new sequence here converges also to zero. Okay, there we have it. This here is the definition of total differentiability. We just need the existence of such a linear map L and such an error map phi. And then this here is the defining property of f being totally differentiable at the given point x tilde. And as I told you before, this linear map L is now the new multivariable derivative. And therefore, you often see more suitable notations for this linear map. For example, you often see simply df for denoting this map. And then one often sets x tilde in the index to say about which point we are talking. Okay, now with the completely same meaning, some people prefer using a capital D instead of a lowercase d. In addition, a slightly different meaning we have when one wants to use a matrix instead of a linear map. Then we would write j and put the function in the index. And the point x tilde we put into parentheses afterwards. And finally then we would have the matrix vector multiplication with h. Okay, now all of these different notations could be used while defining the total differentiability. However, in all cases, we would call the linear map the total derivative of f at the point x tilde. Hence, it's important to remember that now the derivative is not just a number, but a whole linear map. And it makes sense if you think of the linear approximation as we have done it before. However, for the notations here, I can tell you if you represent the linear map by a matrix, we call JF the Jacobian matrix of F. This is a special name you should remember and we will talk about this in more detail later. Okay, maybe for a better visualization, let's look what all these objects are in the one dimensional case. In other words, if N and M are both equal to one. Then, in this case, if the function f is totally differentiable at x tilde, jf at x tilde is given by the derivative of f. More precisely, we would say it's a 1 times 1 matrix with the number f prime at x tilde. So obviously, not so complicated at all. Moreover, if you would write it as an abstract linear map, df of h, we simply would have f prime of x tilde times h. Hence you see, obviously the one dimensional case is included in the definition above. Therefore, I would say let's immediately go to a two dimensional example. Which means now n and m should both be two. Hence the function f goes from r2 into r2. Of course, the function here should not be so complicated, so let's say it flips the two components. And now I want to ask the question, is this function totally differentiable at zero? In other words, we ask, do we have a linear approximation there? And in order to answer this, we look at f at x tilde plus h, which now also has two components, h1 and h2. And now we already know the result, it's given by the flipped components. In other words, here we have h2, h1. However, now we want to rewrite this as a linear approximation. 
So first what we need is f of x tilde, so f of 0, 0, which we can add without a problem because it's already 0. And now let's write this thing here as a matrix vector multiplication. Hence the question is which matrix do we need to send this vector to the vector h2, h1. Indeed this is not so hard, it's 0, 1, 1, 0. Moreover, in this particular case you see, we don't need the error term, the error term is already zero. And of course this means that this function f here was already linear. But the important part for us is now that this function f is indeed totally differentiable at zero. And moreover, this matrix here is the Jacobian matrix at the point zero, zero. Okay, so you see, this was our first simple example for calculating a total derivative. However, I would say let's talk about more properties for total derivatives in the next video. Therefore, let's meet there and have a nice day. Bye.